Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about penetration. In the movies you see people taking cover behind the craziest things, wooden tables, door jams, stuff like that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do some penetration tests using this good old tree sitting here next to me to my left. We're going to take different rifles, 545 by 39, 556, 762 by 39, and 308. We're going to see how much wood those rifles can actually penetrate and how much cover something like this tree might actually offer you. So let's get started. When most people take cover behind an object like this tree, right or wrong, they get fairly close to that cover. I've put a target about two and a half feet behind this tree, and I'm going to shoot through the meaty portion of this tree towards this target. And this tree, at the point where I'm going to aim, is about three and a half feet in diameter. It's three feet six inches. First off, we're going to shoot with a 545 by 39, and we'll see how much, if at all, that bullet can penetrate and see if it'll hit that target. I have a Waffenworks AK-74, only about, I don't know, five yards from the target. Let's see how it does. Let's go take a look at the target and see what we have. So here's where the three rounds of 545 actually came through the tree. You can see by the size of the hole, the bullet is most likely tumbling already. On the target, it's kind of hard to see where the bullet might have hit. That looks like the tip of a bullet that would be tumbling. A lot of these holes in the paper are from debris from the bark that was blown off the tree by the round coming through. So it looks like the round definitely changed its flight path. It wasn't flying true, but it did make it through the tree. If you were within this range of this tree, chances are you would take a, a wound from that rifle being fired at you. Let's try a different caliber and see what we get. Well, we saw what the 545 by 39 was capable of. Next, I have an Arsenal SGL 2194, which is 7.62 by 39. All the ammunition I'm firing out here this afternoon is ball ammunition, no hollow points. Let's see how three rounds of 7.62 by 39 does. Let's go forward and take a look. Well, interesting enough, the 7.62 by 39 did not penetrate as much as the 5.45 by 39. The rounds hit here, about the same spot as the 5.45 by 39, but on the back side of the tree, no new exit rounds or wounds in the tree, and nothing on the paper. The paper looks just like it did before after firing the 5.45 by 39. Okay, next up is a 55 grain ball round of 223 fired out of a definitive arms AR-15 magazine conversion AK. I love this rifle by the way. I'll show you more about it after SHOT Show. All right, three rounds, about the same spot. Let's see how it does. All right, let's go forward and see what the 5.56 round did. Here's where the 5.56 rounds hit. These are the three rounds. And over here on the other side of the tree, no penetration. Again, that's where the 545 by 39 came through. 556 should have came through right about there. It didn't make it through the tree. And you can see on the target, no new punctures of the paper. Seems pretty strange, doesn't it? Let's see what a 308 does. All right, next up is 308. I'm going to fire the 308s out of this Keltec RFB. And let's see how it does. The 308 rounds hit right here. And if we walk over to the other side of the tree, nothing came through. It's really kind of hard to explain, guys. Ballistics are one of those things that Many of us will never understand. You would think that the 308 would punch right through that tree, especially if the 545 could actually make it through. My guess is those 545 rounds were just barely coming through the other side of the tree with not much force. The fact that the 7.62 by 39 and the 308 didn't make it through the tree really tells me that something really strange is kind of going on with the tree. Perhaps there's a knot there, something like that. So you know what we're going to do next? We're going to go find another tree that's slightly smaller in diameter, and we'll see how these rounds stack up with a slightly smaller tree. All right, so the next tree that we've selected is this tree right here. It's one foot smaller in diameter. It's two and a half feet in diameter than the last tree we fired at. Move the target over behind it. 
Got a few more rounds left in the Caltech, so let's see how this tree fares against the 308. All right, we're all set up. Here we go with the Caltech and the 308. Let's go see how it did. All right, guys, so here's where the 308 rounds hit right here. This tree is pretty uniform in diameter, and I don't see any knots in the area that we're using for the target area. So let's go around the other side of the tree and take a look at that. No penetration. Now it's about 28, 29 degrees out here this afternoon. It's been freezing every night, so I don't know if that has anything to do with this. But surprisingly, this round did not penetrate. I've shot trees out here in the past, and 308 has easily penetrated trees about this diameter, so it's kind of odd that it's not punching through this tree. There's no fresh holes on the target. It's pretty interesting. This is actually kind of fun. I'm going to go grab a 5.45 rifle and try that again, see if it has any luck making it through this tree. Okay, I'm back out here with the Waffenworks in 5.45 by 39. It's a 60 grain, 5.45 by 39 round. Let's see how this does against the tree and see if it can repeat the results we found on the slightly thicker tree. Looks like I saw some movement on the target. Let's go check this out. All right, so here's where the 5.45 by 39 rounds hit, right above where the 308 hit. Again, no knots in this tree. Let's take a look at the other side. Check that out, folks. That 5.45, all three rounds made it through the tree. If you take a look at the paper, you can see, again, more debris on the paper. I'm looking for bullet holes. I don't know if I can, that may be a bullet hole. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can see the debris spraying as it came through. Again, I don't think the bullet's coming through with much velocity. I don't see any signs of the bullet laying on the ground, but it is making it through where the 308 did not make it through this tree. Crazy stuff. Let's try a couple more calibers. So let's give the 7.62 by 39 another try at this. The rounds I'm using, the 7.62x39, are 124 grain ball rounds. It's a military load. Here we go again. Saw some movement on the target. It looks like the 7.62x39 may have actually made it through. Let's go check it out. All right, here's where the 7.62x39 hit, just a little bit higher than the 5.45x39. Let's take a look at the other side of the tree. 7.60 by 39 definitely made it through. Made some pretty big exit wounds. And here on the target, you can definitely see a bullet hit. That's clearly a bullet that's tumbling that struck right there. So it looks like the 7.60 by 39 made it through with a little bit more authority than the 5.45 did. But still interesting to note, the 308 didn't make it through in pretty much the exact same spot on the tree. Let's see how the 5.56 does. All right, so let's give the 223 5.56 one more try, again with the Definitive Arms AK. I'm going to aim just a little bit higher this time to get a fresh spot on the tree. All right, let's run down range, see what we got. Here's where the 223 rounds hit, right here, up from the 308, 7.60 by 39, the 545. Let's take a look at the other side of the tree and see what we got. That is an exit wound. So the 223 has made it through this tree. Definitely looks like a bullet hole there, bullet striking the paper sideways. Perhaps there, maybe not. So it's definitely coming through, a lot more debris on the target area. But it did penetrate. The only round not to penetrate this tree so far is the 308. I am just not content with the performance of the 308, so I got a few more rounds in the Keltec. I'm going to beat this tree to death. <laughs> I think that made it through. Let's go take a look. Well, the target definitely looks a little worse for the wear, and what I'm staring at back here is a cavernous hole. Check this out. Now that's what I expected from the 308. Holy cow. Eh, it only took about 20 rounds to do it, but uh, man, that's some damage.
So what do we learn out here this afternoon? I'll be honest guys, I learned something just like many of you may have learned something. The 308 wasn't the super penetrator I thought it was going to be. When I came out here this afternoon, I really expected the 308 to outperform the other calibers. We shot two trees for you guys this afternoon. We shot one that was three and a half foot in diameter, and we shot one that was two and a half feet in diameter. The thicker tree was penetrated only by the 5.45 by 39 with a 60 grain bullet. The two and a half foot in diameter tree was penetrated by all calibers except the 308. Pretty surprising results, at least in my mind. But what can we take away from this? This tree that I'm standing next to here is well over six foot in diameter. This is a thick tree. A tree such as this would offer you substantial cover from fire if you had to take cover behind it. You don't want to find a skinny little tree to hide behind, obviously. Not that a skinny tree would offer you much cover anyway if you're a big guy like myself. If you guys have any questions about what we did out here this afternoon, you can always ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash military arms. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for the subs. We'll talk to you guys soon. Hey guys, I just wanted to share a quick safety tip. We're out here shooting at these trees at relatively close range today, and you'll notice I have eye protection on, and of course I have hearing protection on. When you're shooting firearms, you should always have eye protection on, just as a general precaution. But seriously, when you're shooting at stuff at close range like this, or if you're playing with explosives like Tannerite or stuff like that, it really is wise to have shooting protection for your eyes and for your ears to prevent any damage because stuff flies back. If you take a look at this target that we're shooting out here this afternoon, there's debris all over it. Stuff can come straight back at the shooter. I've seen it happen. Thanks and be safe, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.